Hi, boys and girls. This is Uncle Doug coming to you from the basement of one of the ministry houses here in beautiful Liberty, Missouri, home of some of uh, the craziest Jesus lovers anywhere. Um, I am uh, doing a video about Romans chapter 1, and uh, so I would like you to pull out your trusty Bible and follow along with me. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version, and um, we're going to talk through the kind of things that will land on you when you do wrong and what it is you have to do wrong for those kind of things to land on you. So, if you look at your own life and you see those things landing on you, what maybe you ought to backtrack and do so they unland on you? <laughs> you see what I mean? People come and they say, I need help hearing God. And I said, did you ever hear God? Oh, I used to hear him great. Okay, and now you don't hear him anymore. Yeah, okay, well, where was the fork in the road? What happened at that V where you were hearing him and then all of a sudden you went this way? What was that? Oh, I I got physical with a girlfriend. I joined a coven. I, you know, whatever. Okay, well, let's just go back to that. Repent for it. Try and set it right and see if we can't get you back on the path you were supposed to be on. Anyway, so this is a great example there's wildly controversial stuff in here that may get me into trouble in all kinds of ways. I don't know. But this is what the Bible says. I'm reading from an eight translation. Look at that monster. That's just the New Testament. It's as big as my head. That's just, uh, just the New Testament. But there's eight parallel on each page. So it's kind of handy to uh, sometimes look how this has the Revised Standard, the Jerusalem Bible, the New English Bible, Living Bible, Modern uh, Phillips, and uh, the TEV, so, plus the King James. And I've had this since, like, forever. This is, uh, I remember reading this when I was 12, 13 years old, and it's got my really cruddy kid handwriting in there. One of these are these are things I wrote down when I I was a kid that I thought were worth. Uh, one of them's from Tim LaHaye, so you you know it's been a while since. Uh, uh, it says, "Read the word when you feel like it, and when you don't, read it until you do." <laughs> Whatever other problems I have with Tim LaHaye, that's that's a fairly wise uh, little tidbit there. Uh, there's one that says, "This book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book." Uh, I've got one in here that is really beautiful. That's a, a prayer, I guess, I wrote church camp or somewhere. Uh, it's probably a quote from somebody. Um, it says, I want to get to so close to him that there's no big change on that day when Jesus calls my name. That's it. Think about it. That's real pretty. See what I got in the back. Lots of, lots of scribbles and quotes, and me as a different Bible studies. I was preaching in churches when I was fourteen, um, like Sunday mornings, and leading a youth group uh, evangelism crusades and singing in the choir and all kinds of stuff. This, there's this whole section here about Jeremiah 18 and what it means to yield and why the clay didn't yield and stuff. Anyway, never mind. A uh, little uh, nostalgia there. But uh, we're going to read Romans 1 and talk about the kind of stuff that will land on you in the last days may have already landed on you and why it landed on you and what you need to do to get it back off again. Okay. So read along with me. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, 
which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Period. That was one sentence. Creatively punctuated. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. He really wanted to go visit him. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established. Some passage, some uh, translation states, to the end that you may be complete. Okay? That's clear that he expected to go to the tongue-speaking, spirit-filled congregation in Rome and impart other stuff to them. How about that? Uh, that's Go read my book, Rain Right Now, Lord. The reality of impartation, the reality of imparting, imparting all kinds of stuff, and the need for it in the body right now. Uh, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, Baptists will use that next verse to say, oh, what I meant by imparting spiritual gifts was that by our mutual faith would be comforted. Now, the word there is charisma. Okay, imparting charisma. They, you know, you, you can't just write it off that easy. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, uh, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. <coughs> <coughs> for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Nature and all of creation has plenty to explain to people that God is real. Nobody has an excuse. They have to willfully call it something else because uh, the truth is in them, despite them being full of unrighteousness. Because of that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. For professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense, the payment, of their error, which was meat. Meat. Because of that. <coughs> which means it was deserved. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. They were trying to get God out of their head, so God gave them over to a reprobate mind, a sinful mind, to do those things which are not convenient. Uh, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity. Let's see, how do the other ones translate malignity? Bitterness. Uh, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Okay. As we run down this list, uh, there may very well be a couple of things on there that you wince a little. Um, the, the obvious, there's a bunch of, of this passage that talks about homosexuality. And that it's one of the things that God turns people over to when they go the wrong way. Uh, there's other passages in the Bible that say that, that it is the fault of the priests of the church when a nation starts to come under the curses of God, and this is one of the things that is a result. There are people like the, God bless them, whack jobs, at Westboro Baptist Church that uh, hold signs, God hates fags and all this stuff and protest this and that and whatever. And they're missing the point entirely. Never mind what other things might be wrong. They're missing the point entirely that when a nation has certain kinds of problems, it's the church's fault. It's because the priests stopped teaching the people to fear God, stopped doing what they were supposed to do, and God turned the nation over to a long list of stuff, one of which includes homosexuality. Now, <clears throat> this video is not intended uh, to insult homosexuals. This video is not intended uh, in, in, to, I, I, I don't know, I'm not aiming at you at all. I'm aiming at the church and the people that uh, are not doing, the people that say they're Christians and are not at all doing what God said that we were supposed to do. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you just as it applies to everybody else that the Bible applies to. But uh, let's go back and look at some of these some of these things. I think it's unfair for us to uh, highlight one sin as if it is so much worse than another. Um, and practically every list where deviant sexual behavior is, <laughs> lying and gossip is on the same list. Um even double-mindedness. Okay, let's look at this list again. <clears throat> they were filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, which is sexual sin of different sorts, wickedness, could be about anything, covetousness, which is envy or jealousy or greediness, 
<clears throat> maliciousness, which just tends to be uh, just a general ugliness, just a general looking for something to do that's wrong and that's going to hurt somebody. Full of envy, full of murder, debate, endless words, jabbity, jabbity, jabbity. Deceit, malignity, uh, which is bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, you know. Whispers, uh, some of the other passages say gossips, slanderers, um, let's see, treachery, malevolence, scandal mongers. Rude, arrogant, uh, today's English version, oh, let's go with the Living Bible. It says, their lives became full of every kind of wickedness and sin, of greed and hate, envy, murder, fighting, lying, bitterness, and gossip. They're backbiters, haters of God, insolent, proud braggarts, always thinking of new ways of sinning and continually being disobedient to their parents. They tried to misunderstand, broke their promises, and were heartless without pity. Fully aware of God's death penalty for these crimes, they went right ahead and did them anyway and encouraged others to do them too. Okay, now let's backtrack here uh, through the symptomology to the root cause. Now we've got that whole passage. They're filled with all this stuff, okay? Uh, right above that, verse 28... Uh, uh, they didn't want to have God in their mind, so God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are uh, not good. Right above that, uh, the men left their natural affection for women and burned with lust for the men. The women, in verse 26, burned for the women. In verse 25, they changed the truth of God into a lie. Worship the creature more than the creator. Uh, okay, so that's like... Uh, worshiping the created things. I love my Corvette. I worship myself. I worship my girlfriend. Uh, I worship my job. I worship, you know, anything that's uh, not the creator uh, that made it all. In uh, 24, God gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So there's all kinds of ways to do that. Um, seems to be leading up to sexual sin there, but uh, all kinds of stuff. Verse 23, he changed the glory, they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like of corruptible man to birds and beasts and creeping things. So that's idolatry. That's creating carven images and worshiping uh, totems and, and, and whatever. In 22, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So we're still, we're still talking about different symptomology here. And then in 21, it says, they became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Okay? Then what's right before that? Uh, it says, because that, okay, so this is the cause. This is what they did. Um, he says, uh, uh, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, Neither were thankful. That's it. That's what you did. Uh, it says they had no excuse. <coughs> they knew God. They didn't acknowledge him as God. And they weren't thankful. Okay? So, how might you have done that if you have an addiction to porn, if you can't stop lying, if your mouth is out of control and you're a gossip and a liar and a, you know, whatever, if you are struggling with homosexual thoughts, if you are whatever, this passage says that those things landed on you. Uh, it's, it's on the one hand, it's a curse from God because you've gone your own way and not done what he commanded, which was to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your strength and all your soul and all your mind, love your neighbors yourself, the first two commandments. But you didn't, you, you had, you knew God, didn't honor him as God, and you didn't thank him. There's lots and lots and lots of verses that say rejoice in all things, rejoice. Whatever comes, good or bad, you like it, you don't like it, 
rejoice. Why? Because he knows what he's doing. Oops, my screen went dark here. There it is. He knows what he's doing, and you, by not thanking him for whatever he's doing, are arrogantly believing that you know what's best for you, and this isn't it, and I'm not thanking him because he's not on my side, and he's punking me, and he's not a good God because I don't like this. And I know what, it, I know what good is, and I know how this is going to work out, and trust me, this is not good, and God is not good because I'm not liking this. Now, I told somebody the other night, we talked about this in our meeting last night, a lot of people have this really approachable Jesus, like boyfriend, best friend, brother, husband, bro, something, and... We have to always kind of walk this duality of God between joint heirs, adopted sons, brother, he's our father, bridegroom, whatever. And uh, a lot of people are teaching all of those kind of relationships without fear of the Lord. They take Old Testament God, shove him far away, Focus on warm, fuzzy, soft Jesus, and uh, the result is no wisdom, no fear of the Lord, uh, no awe, no respect, no sense of his bigness. You uh, focus entirely on his love and how it makes you feel to know that you're loved, to know that he's with you, to know he's watching out for you, but no, no real expectation that you better do what he tells you or else uh, because he's just love. And yet, it's love to obey him, and uh, it's love to believe that he's smarter than you, therefore, you must obey him, or else. Uh, <clears throat> so we have this kind of sense that, like, like okay, I'm, I'm here, and I'm this smart, and God is, like, up here. And uh, so I ask him hey, Lord, what about this or that or whatever? And he tells me stuff, and uh, I can thank him because he's like, I don't know, 20, 30% smarter than me. And and he's like fairly powerful and can do stuff and help me find my car keys or get me a good parking spot at the mall or whatever. And that's not even right at all. That's not even right at all. Okay, there's you. And then there's him, like, 20 light years away from you, okay? Like, way, way, way unapproachably out of reach beyond you. His ways are not your ways. You are a bug, a grasshopper, dare I say, a cockroach relative to him. And it's a miracle that he bothers with us at all. And we seem to think sometimes that the Lord says, hey, go do this or that. Go start a ministry. Go, go start a church. We think, okay, well, I know how to do that. I studied that in the seminary. We know all about churches and what they should look like and how they should operate from what everybody told me in seminary. So I'm going to do what I think looks like what God wants done. Well, the better thing would be to shut up. Hit your face and listen real good about what exactly he means and what it should look like instead of going by what you think or him saying, hey, I think you should do this. And you saying, hey, you know, Lord, that's a great idea. I think it would be better if we just applied this little thing to it. If we just tied this little little bow that we learned from Bill Hybels or we applied this little tweak to it that we learned from uh, Rick Warren, uh, I, think, I think we could really improve on, on uh, your wisdom, Lord. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Bad, 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 bad. I, uh, I was lamenting one day, several years ago, how little fear of the Lord there is in this country. And wondering how it got this bad. And I said, Lord, uh, 
in the age of computers and the hair club for men, I don't think they're impressed that you know every hair on their head. That doesn't seem quite uh, like very much of a challenge to us uh, technological digital age people. What can I tell them that will explain to them how big you are? He said, you know quarks? I said, yeah, I know quarks. There's uh, electrons, neutrons, and protons we all learned about in school. And then there's stuff even smaller than that that we found, like muons and quarks. Trillions of them passing through your body every second. Itty-bitty smallest thing we found. Who knows what else is out there we haven't found yet. Uh, anyway, he says, you know quarks? I said, yeah, I know quarks. I had just read an article about quarks. And uh, <clears throat> he says, every quark in the universe has a personal name. And I know it, and I named it, and I know where it started and where it's going to end and everything it's going to bump into in between. Is that big enough for you? Okay, we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of decimal places. I'm thinking, okay, like serial numbers? No. Mike, Bob, Ted, Irma. Okay, every, every construct, every skin cell, every atom, every electron, proton, neutron, every, every hair on my head has a name, yep. Every bird that falls out of a tree, yep. Every feather on every bird, every blood cell on every bird, every, yeah, yeah. That is who you're messing with. That is a God that knows what you should have for lunch and what kind of shirt you should wear. That is God that should be consulted on everything because he designed it all before he started this whole ride and set it all into motion to go exactly the way that it's going. <laughs> and uh, someday you're going to stand and marvel at how perfect it was. I'm not going to tell the story right now, but I had an opportunity once to partake uh, a little sliver of the mind of Christ and all I could do was just say wow it's all perfect everything is tied up with a bow everything had a reason there's no injustice in it all it was perfectly right, perfectly just, perfectly reasonable, and perfectly micromanaged to the hundredth of a decimal place. And all I could do was just stand there and marvel. And it was like the we got to the end of the ride and Great White Throne Judgment, Lake of Fire, New Heavens, New Earth, everything, and you could look back and see the entire thing down to the last amoeba down to the last butterfly, the last hungry kid in Africa, the last everything, and it was awesomely perfect. And all I was left with after that was when something happens, I just go, you know, it's all part of the plan. <laughs> and around here, they get sick of hearing it, but something goes squirrely, it's all part of the plan. I don't get it yet. I don't get what the what it's going to do, who it's going to refine, what we're going to learn. But it's all part of the plan. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> so of the first two components, one is that you knew God, but you didn't acknowledge him as God. You didn't hold him in as high an esteem with as much fear of the Lord, which is with as much awe, with as much respect as you should have. Have I curled up on his lap and him kissed my boo-boos and rubbed my head and told me everything's going to be okay and treated me as a son? Yes. Does that mean that when he's holding court, I just burst into the throne room and say, Hey, Dad, give me five. Give me some lunch money. No. He's a mighty king. And even a son goes, bows down with respect, says, Sir, please, sir. And, and makes his request. Have I, 
Have I hugged Jesus? Yeah. But it was only because he made me. Because when I saw him coming, I wanted to crawl under something. I wanted to hide, and there was nothing to hide under. And the my blackness, I was I was deathly afraid that somehow my blackness might stick on his whiteness, that 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 my filth would 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 discolor the pure beyond any pure you can understand whiteness and as he walked toward me I just was begging him to go away not out of guilt not out of any sense of injustice uh, but because I was deathly afraid that I would I would somehow corrupt him who was holy and perfect uh, and this is a guy that thought he was pretty clean. <laughs> this is a guy that thought he was repented up. Even so, um, I got no business, no business being that close to that kind of holiness. And he stood me up and gave me a hug anyway. And for just a minute, let me see how just and loving and perfect and fair and uh, exactly the way it was planned <laughs> everything will go regardless of anybody's <laughs> uh, efforts to the contrary so he says <clears throat> you knew I was God but you didn't honor me as God, and you didn't thank me. There's another passage in Psalm 51 where the Lord thunders from Zion. I talk about it in the video Remnant Training Program, where the remnant stands before God, and he preaches this to them and says, this is what I want you to go tell the people. And they're like, oh yeah, no. We can't. We're hypocrites. We can't do that. We, we can't. We can't tell them that. You got to cleanse us, wash us white as snow. And they're terrified, begging, please, you got to change us. You got to restore the joy of our salvation because we can't do that. In Psalm 51. In Psalm 50, he says, uh, I don't need sacrifices. If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. I own the beast of the, uh, the cattle on a thousand hills. The forests are all mine, every beast they're in. If I were hungry, I'd not tell you. The world is mine thereof. And then he says, this is what I want. Offer unto God thanksgiving. Pay thy vows unto the Most High. Call out to me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you can glorify me. That's it. Offer God thanksgiving. Do what you promised you would do. If you said he was Lord, then he better be Lord all the way. Offer unto God, uh, call out when you're in trouble, he'll deliver you, and you can give him glory. Every dad wants to feel like a hero a little bit, and uh, he wants to know that you get it, and that when you're in trouble, you're going to call, and when he rescues you, you can let everybody know how great he is and what he did for you. Then it goes on to say, but the wicked, God says, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant. How, how dare you preach my word? How dare you preach my covenant, seeing as how you hate instruction, you cast my words behind you, you saw a thief, then then you joined in with him and were partakers with adulterers. You've given your mouth to evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. That's got to be denominationalism somewhere in there. These things you have done, and I kept silence. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I prove you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you that forgot God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver you. Then he goes back. But whoever offers praise glorifies me. To him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Control your tongue. Anyway, so 
There's two passages there. This one in Romans and this one in Psalms where it says, Just acknowledge who I am and thank me. And when you're in trouble, call and I'll help. And it's, people will say, oh, well, he's narcissistic and he just want worship and, and he just wants somebody and I would, I would rather go to hell than say holy, holy, holy to a narcissistic God who just needs approval. It's not it. It's not it. It's gravity. It's a law. It's an immutable principle of the universe. If you are not being thankful, then you will envy, you'll be greedy, you'll be a liar, you're going to try and take other people's stuff, you're going to wish for something you don't have, you're going to, you're going to look to lust to satisfy you because you're not being satisfied by what's offered to you and given to you freely by a good God who loves you. You're probably going to be on antidepressants, you're probably going to have anxiety, you're going to have malignity, you're going to have all kinds of this stuff. Um, because you refuse to be satisfied and, and you think you're bigger than God. You're worshiping all the wrong things. You're trusting in your Corvette or your girlfriend. You're trusting in the work of your own hands. You think you're Superman. And yeah, that's just going to go badly. There's just no way around it. That's just going to go badly. And uh, voices are going to whisper and drag you farther and farther away. And the Lord's going to harden your heart and let you have it. Go ahead. Go worship that. See how that works for you. Plenty of verses we could quote. Or he says, yeah, it's a piece of wood. Worship it. See what happens. See if it knows the future. See if it prophesies to you what's going to happen 600 years from now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give it a shot. And he'll let them until they realize that it's useless. That he's real big and we're real little. That he's the only source. And that we're going into the worst time the world has ever seen when men will wish that they could die and they won't. Mountains would fall on them and crush them. People will go mad for the sights that their eyes see. Except the ones being grateful for whatever comes into their hand. Thanks for this Thanks for this crumb, Lord. Thanks for another day, Lord. Thanks for keeping us alive so we can see your return, Lord. Thanks for taking my daughter to heaven so she doesn't have to go through any more of this, Lord. We better get good at it. And the great falling away, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the cause of it. Because you knew God, and you didn't acknowledge him as God, and you didn't thank him. You may already be there. There may be some future falling away. We may be in the, in the process of the great falling away already, or we may have already fallen. <laughs> hard to look at what's out there and say we didn't but, but however it comes it comes because of this because you think you're smarter than God you don't acknowledge him for how big he is and who he is and you're not thankful you want to tweak it you want to edit it you want to improve on it somehow you want to get it to look the way you want it to look you can't get out of his way and uh, let him be God. No, he's not as trustworthy as Bill Hybels or uh, Rick Warren or somebody else. <sighs> Rob Bell. Anyway, so <clears throat> here we are. If some of that stuff is active in your life, it's probably to the degree that you're not being thankful enough and not recognizing him as God enough. So, maybe we ought to repent. Maybe we ought to cry out and beg and plead and ask him to fix it, to fix us, to get that stuff off of us so that we can get right. Maybe we ought to do that right now, okay? Oh, God. Oh, 
God, we have put you in our molds. We have thought of you as a genie on a bottle and taken you off the shelf Sunday morning and rubbed the bottle so you'd show up for an hour and a half and then go back in the bottle and put you back on the shelf for another week. We have tried to sell you. We have tried to tell people we understood you. We have arrogantly claimed that we know your ways. We don't see through a glass darkly anymore. We're sure that we understand you. And we are ants. We are grasshoppers. We are gnats. We are cockroaches. We are ants looking through the plastic of our little ant farm at the, at the guy that started the whole thing and put us there and saying we know what he's thinking. We know why he did this. We know what his life is like because we're ants. Oh, God. Forgive us, oh, God. Forgive us, oh, God. Please, Lord, show us how big you are, how glorious and mighty, how righteous and true. Show us the difference between our filthy rags of righteousness, the good things we say, we, the, 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 the awards, the, 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 the treasure we think we've earned versus what is really holiness. Please, Lord. Please, Lord, change us. Please, Lord, forgive us. Please, Lord, have mercy on us. We know that those things have fallen on us. That we have operated at times in, in pride and envy and, and, and all those things. That list, Lord. That don't just whisper from a, a distance, but that we've, we've agreed with and brought into our hearts and, and manifested those in our lives in defiance of you and your word. Because we weren't thankful for what we had. We had to reach out and grab something else that we wanted. We didn't trust you to meet our needs. We manipulated and bribed to get what other people told us we should have. To get what the TV said we should be like. Oh God. We recognize that these things are falling on our nations. That we are corrupt, and it's because the church has been corrupt. Because we've been carnal, because we've chased the wrong things, because we've taught lies, because we've exported denominationalism and faction and envy and competition all over the world. Oh, God have mercy. God have mercy. God have mercy. God have mercy. Please, Lord, cleanse us, O oh God. Sanctify us, O oh God. Consecrate us, O oh God, for your purposes. Give us fear of the Lord. You said that you give liberally and without reproach to those that ask, and we're asking, Lord, for more fear of the Lord. The beginning of wisdom. That we would understand our place relative to you and how big you truly are and what, what specs we are. And yet you bother with us and that you love us and sent your son to die for us and we are such miserable examples of a son. Please, Father, change us transform us by the renewing of our minds that we would not be conformed to this world but be transformed that we would know what is the, the good, the pleasing and the perfect will of God that we would have the mind of Christ that we would see one another the people around us through your eyes not through the eyes of, of man of, of stereotypes and racism and, and all of the stuff of this world but that we would see through your eyes oh God Have mercy. Change us, O oh God. Change our hearts. Change our nations. Change our cities, O oh God, that the bride would stand up 
bright and clean and shiny that she would be one, that she would stop fighting about stupid stuff. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. We're sorry. We're so sorry. Mercy, oh God, have mercy. <sighs> Blessed is the man that stands in the day of trouble with his eyes on God, with a broken and contrite heart. with love that makes him unrecognizable as a man. Blessed is that man. Please, children, please hear me. Stop being angry at the world for being the world. They are as bad as they are because the church is off track. And we need to do something different. Desperately. Fundamentally. Orders of magnitude different than what we've been doing. Don't be satisfied for the status quo of churchianity or home groups or cell groups or organic church or whatever else that's just a tweak on a broken system. We've got to get back to love. We've got to get back to being one with all those that are in Christ. We've got to get back to crazy, sacrificial over-the-top love that shocks the world. John 17. Jesus gives the greatest evangelism strategy of all. Let them be one, as I and the Father are one, because then the world will know that you sent me. It will absolutely prove to the world that Jesus is real when we are one, as we're supposed to be. Not ecumenical, not pretending to get along at a ministerial association, but freakishly, supernaturally, one, like he and the Father are one. I, I don't know how to get there from here. I've tried and tried and tried. And we're all too stupid too selfish <sighs> he's going to have to do it he's going to have to get us across the Jordan into that promised land because there's no way to part these waters Between what rotten stinkers we are and what we're supposed to be on the other side. But I know this you better keep him in the right place, in the right perspective, high enough up where he's supposed to be, and you low enough down. And you gotta thank him. For everything everything it's all for your good and he knows what he's doing and he's just and it's right and to not thank him is Antichrist because it means you think you know better than he does and you don't
So we pray. All of this to the Father. With desperation and expectation and anticipation. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.